Today, we're reviewing the Razer Blade 17 2021, not the original one that came out earlier this year, but the refreshed version of it, the mid-2021 model, which I have directly in front of me. I skipped the first one. It was still using a 10th gen Intel processor and with AMD coming out with the 5000 series, it just felt like it was the same product from the year before. But now that it's using an 11th gen Intel processor, I feel like there's a massive performance update. Plus they changed a few items around, making it probably my favorite 17 inch gaming laptop again, I understand it's not the fastest 17 inch gaming laptop, but I feel like it does a good job of balancing everything. And I find if you're looking for a gaming laptop, you don't just want it to be the best at one thing. You want everything to kind of balance nicely. Now, before I get into the review, a quick shout out to Bellroy for sponsoring this portion of the video. They have this beautiful black sling that is perfect to carry your everyday items like your wallet and your smartphone and a key clip. Like you could literally attach your keys to the key clip inside. It's water resistant, it's woven fabric, and it's made from recycled plastics. And the best part, it actually looks really good. If you're interested in checking it out, they're offering 10% off, which you can find in the description down below. Now this laptop is six pounds, so it's obviously not the latest laptop in the world, but that's pretty light for a 17 inch gaming laptop. The biggest thing they changed this year with the 17 inch version is the fact they put this anti fingerprint resistant coating. Now it's not completely 100% resistant, but it's so much better than the previous coating that they were using before. Like you literally pick up the previous 17 or 15 from last year and your fingerprints were all over it. Like if I do that now, the fingerprints do register, but it's not nearly as gross as it used to be. On top of that, I do find it much easier to wipe off your fingerprints compared to before. I find that I have to like scrub a lot less to get them off. Whereas before I'm like sitting there and, and really pushing down to get the fingerprints off. Now it's still a very attractive laptop. It has that MacBook vibe, but for gamers, the Razer logo is still in the middle and it does light up when you turn on the laptop. There's tons of IO to choose from. You have your power connector, which is using a 230 watt charging brick. You have uh, RJ45, which is 2.5 gigabits, two USB ports, Thunderbolt 4 port, which can also be used to charge the laptop. Whatever charger you use must support power delivery and it can go up to 100 watts. So if you're gaming on this, your battery is still going to drain if you're charging it via USB type C. But if you're bringing this to school or somewhere else and you're just using it for productivity, at least you can use a USB type C charger. You do have a uh, audio jack. And then on the other side, you have a Kensington lock, HDMI, another USB port, another Thunderbolt 4 port. And then of course you have an SD card slot, which is UHS-3. That is significantly faster than the standard UHS-2 SD card slots that are on most other laptops. Now, of course, you can open up this laptop with one hand as you should considering its size. But here's the thing, when I open it up and I, and I talked about this on my unboxing, like when you open up this laptop, you see how the display automatically locks in, that means it has a good hinge. This hinge is absolutely solid. And that's what you should get from any laptop you buy. I said before, I, I've, I've just reviewed the HP Victus, the HP Omen, the Gigabyte Aero 15. You open up those lids and it's shaking forever. Like it's literally like an earthquake happening to the laptop. It just won't stop for at least 45 minutes. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. Either way, you can get this laptop with different types of displays. I have here the 360 Hertz version, but there's a QHD version with 240, a QHD version with 165 Hertz. There's even a 4K version with 120 Hertz. Honestly, I do not think the 4K version is worth it on a display this size. It's only 17 inches. This is not a 50 inch display that you need that 4K. QHD is the sweet spot. So go for the 165 Hertz, Hertz version. Don't spend money on the 240 Hertz. I honestly don't think you're gonna see the benefits of it. Now this is the 1080p version and it feels nice and smooth. The color accuracy, the color gamut is good. And I feel more than confident to do design work on this. You don't have a fingerprint scanner to log you in, but you do have a facial recognition camera at the top, which is Windows Hello, that can scan your face and get you into your laptop quickly. The keyboard is exactly the same. There, there's nothing new here. You have that chroma key lighting that Razer offers, some of the best in the business. And of course, I say it again, the keyboard typing experience is okay. Like you'll type for hours. It's great for productivity, but these keys are a bit too mushy for me. And I would love a little bit more of a tactile feel for a gaming laptop. You have four speakers on the top of the deck. The speakers sound absolutely awesome. And the touchpad is nice and massive with very good accuracy. 
Now, my review unit comes with an i7 11800H processor from Intel. It also has an RTX 3080, uh, 17 inch display, one terabyte NVMe SSD. But the big deal is that this RTX 3080 runs at 135 watts. The Blade 14 and the Blade 15 Advanced top out at 100 watts. And that's a big difference. Like you're looking at anywhere from a 15 to 30 frames per second difference in the types of games you're playing. And, and, and that's a massive difference, right? Like when you give a system more power and you give a chassis big enough that is capable of cooling that GPU, you're gonna let this 3080 perform exactly how it should. Now, one of you asked me, how does this compare to the MSI GE76, which has 155 or 165 watt uh, RTX 3080? And there's a difference there too. Like I saw about 10 to 15 frames per second more with the GE76, but it's not as significant compared to 100 watts. Now, in terms of CPU performance, it's average, like it's it's not the fastest 11th gen 800H I've tested, but it does a pretty good job overall. I was able to undervolt the CPU and increase the overclock it a little bit. And that helped with the performance very small, not as drastic as other 17 inch laptops, but it did help. If you're buying this to do content creation, I think going with an Intel processor is obviously better if you're using the Adobe suite, if you're a developer, it performed very well. It wasn't the fastest, but it still did a fantastic job of compiling Mozilla Firefox. As for heat management, Razer's allowing their laptops not to run as conservative as they did before. They're letting the CPU push over 90 degrees Celsius if you go into Razer Synapse and you put the profile on boost. As long as you're okay with seeing temperatures over 90 degrees, you're gonna be able to push the CPU as hard as it can go. The lowest it will drop is 65 watts. It'll start around 80 watts, but then when things get a bit too hot, it will drop down to 65 watts. Now, if that's uncomfortable for you, you can go into the settings, you can drop it to medium or just regular high, not boost, and then the CPU will run at 45 watts, and then temperatures will stay around 80 to 85 degrees Celsius. Now, fan noise is actually pretty good on this. Even though it's using an Intel processor, I was expecting it to be insanely loud all the time, but the, the sound quality that came from these four speakers overcame the fan noise, which was good, and if you, put everything on max, it will get loud closer to 60 decibels. But if you leave it on auto and you let the laptop do its thing, you'll have more of a quiet experience hovering around 50 to 55. Oh yeah, there's one other thing I forgot to mention. The keyboard temperatures are really good. Like most laptops hover around 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. This keyboard, the temperature stays around 30 to 35, which means if you're ever playing games for long sessions, your fingers are not going to get hot. Now internally, this looks beautiful. You have this black aesthetic, which matches the entire laptop. You have this vapor chamber cooler to keep the CPU and GPU cool. You have two fans on opposite ends. You have one storage slot that's populated with a PCIe Gen 4 drive, and it gets really fast read and write speeds. And there's an extra slot on the left-hand side if you wanna add more storage in the future. You have two slots for RAM upgradable to 64, and there's a swappable Wi-Fi card. There is a 70 watt hour battery that's been split up and I got about five hours and 31 minutes before needing to charge. I love the fact that they have fans here. I totally forgot to mention this when I was talking about performance, but the Blade 17 does have a mock switch. So you can switch back and forth between Nvidia Optimus and the dedicated GPU. All the tests I performed on this laptop were using the dedicated GPU. Unless I was measuring battery life, I put it back on Nvidia Optimus. Honestly, I love this thing. It's still one of my favorite 17 inch gaming laptops, but I know it's super duper expensive. And all you care about is getting the best value and the most performance, then there's other products out there for you. But if you're looking for something that's very refined, has a good balance of everything, pays attention to the smaller details that other companies don't, then the Blade 17 is probably a laptop you wanna check out. If you're interested, there'll be links to it in the description down below. If you have any questions, you know where to reach me too. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.